Welcome everyone to another episode of Saving the World Together with Luke McMichael and Martin Resney. Today we have another special guest from the Golden Door Awards, Esme Dawood, who is the winner of the gold medal for the poetry contest uh, with the Golden Door Awards. So thank you so much for coming and joining us today, Esme. We'd love to hear your story, what inspired you to get into poetry and, and how we can kind of learn from you and uh, grow from your message. So, We'll give you a few minutes to introduce yourself uh, now, go, if, you, if you'd like. Go ahead. Hi. Um, it's very nice to be here and nice to speak to you. Um, I, I got into poetry from the age of five. Um, I always kind of wrote poems. It was sort of just a way to cope with the world. Um, and my love of poetry and words led me to doing um, a doctorate and a master's at the University of Oxford. Um, on medieval drama, so early modern drama and Shakespeare up to 1642. And um, poems have always sustained me throughout whatever I did. I've had many interesting experiences in life. I've had an arranged marriage, uh, which, you know, didn't work out. I've had a marriage of somebody I met at university, the full falling in love and having the affair and everything else. And I've had the pleasure of my husband, my first husband, being a very good friend of mine now. So I've lived a very varied life doing things. I've also had been lucky enough to have two children who are now 23 and 20 and um, started off with me mothering them but thanks to my diagnosis with primary progressive multiple sclerosis about 10 years ago, now they have the chance to mother me. So it all balanced out nicely. <laughs> um, as I said, I've, I've had sort of interesting experiences in life. One of those was um, last summer. It's nearly exactly a year ago. It was the 18th of June, 2023, when uh, Shazala Daoud, Suleiman Daoud, Hamish Hardin, Harding, P.G. Nojle, and Stockton Rush got on the Titan mm. and didn't come back. Mm. His other is my little brother. He was born when I was five. And his son, Suleiman, was my younger son's twin cousin. They were born within days of each other. They were raised. I mean, they played together, they celebrated every birthday together. And uh, Suleiman was only 19, so they never got any time together as adults at all. Mm. They'd only just started on, on the journey to adulthood. That's amazing, yeah. It was such a tragedy. I don't know, um, I don't know, words, I don't know what to say. Words can't really express the, uh, the feeling of, of the tragedy of losing. How many people were on the were on the Titan? There were five. It was five of them. Yeah, one of them was Hamish Harding. He was in his fifties. Uh, the other one was Stockton Rush, who was the rule breaker, who thought you know safety was just not such an important thing. Yeah. Uh, to quote him, "If you want to be safe, don't get out of bed." Isn't that great advice? Um, <laughs> and so, so in, in also P.G. Najle, who was in his 80s and whose daughter grieves him, but she always knew he would go like that. And he said, I would like to go like that because he'd been an explorer his entire life. Mm. My brother was 48. But the youngest member was Suleiman at 19. Wow. Well, I, just, yeah. uh, I would say, uh, I think I've heard uh, very recently, just a couple of days ago, an uh, interview with James Cameron, who's also... Uh, has a lot of expertise in undersea exploration and uh, was very involved with this case uh, the whole time. And uh, basically his response to the attitude of the designer of the sub uh, was that uh, if you want to move fast and break things, you need to make sure you're not inside of the thing that, that yes. breaks. Yeah. Yes. I mean, he's been down 38 times. I saw that as well. And, and he, he said that he knew the second he heard that it was over, as did my younger son, because he's really into science. He, he was like James Cameron. He's like, it's over. They're gone. But like P.G. Najle's daughter said, 
I wanted to have hope for those four days because then my father was alive for 96 more hours. And that kind of describes what I did, although it was terrible because that would have meant that they were alive. So I kept worrying about how they were breathing because obviously when you get anxious, you start to pant, mm. you know, and then and the, the space was so small. It was, one reporter said, um, it had all the comforts of an MRI machine. And with my condition, I have frequent MRIs. So every time I go to an MRI now, it, it's all that. And of course, inside the MRI machine, there's banging noises. So it's like reliving the whole thing again every time. Yeah. So going through these all these challenges in your life, you've been able to kind of turn towards poetry as a way yes, of... Yes, kind of exactly. It, it, out these it feelings hurts and... no one, I hope. <laughs> and, uh, you know. So you've, uh, you've collected them all into uh, a, a book that's gonna be coming out soon, In the Wake of the Titan, by uh, going to be published by Olympia Publishers soon. Um, do you have any excerpts or any piece of poetry that you'd like to share with us today at all, or anything specific that you well, would mind uh, it, it, reading? It depends what kind of poem you would like. Like I said, I my poems cover all kinds of subjects, so it could be whatever you want. Okay. Well, uh, we'll, we'll leave it to you. If you have any favorites, that, that uh, even anything short or, or simple, it's always fun to kind of get a little taste of it. Okay. Um, I Here's my phone. Whatever comes up first. I could do that. Yeah, sure. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do one of the Titan. I'm going to do one perhaps about this one. Yes. Recently, I went on an aircraft and it so happened that there was a little fly on board. So the fly was buzzing around. Meanwhile, I wrote a poem about it. It's called Flying with a Fly. On board, on the way to the Greek metropolis, escorted, not thwarted, by a fly whom persists, buzzing in closer, speeding confusedly, going so much faster than normally. Of course, this sweet buzzing insect doesn't know. Goodbye, blue sky, the city of your abode. Flap at you, bat at you, not really friends. Don't want the bacteria collected on your ends. Could be the entrails of some drippy nose or a turd of some recent dispose. Here you are, bringing from near and far, gristle and grub. Settle down, newfound, rub, rub, rub. Should feel affection, after all, accompanying me, bumping me, so cute and small. Economy is pinched in tight, so little space, somehow an additional blight, a fly in my face. It's nice, it's special, a different species of friend. Landing now, insected frau, the journey ends. Thank you. Thank nice, you. Very nice. That's great. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. I like it. So, hmm. We just had um, recently another interview, uh, Motani from uh, Cameroon, that shared a poem as well. So, it, it, it's a, this is the second time we've had a poet on, on the uh, channel. So, it's lots of fun to kind of get different ideas on there as far as how this kind of poetry can actually help save the world. Uh, you know, it's, it seems small in some ways, but it can have a huge impact if it's kind of uh, taken in the right way. Um, and I really love, you know, poetry and art of, of all kinds when it's unifying, when it kind of unites people in our love for, for it and our love for the, um, I guess, the intrinsic value or the or the just the purity of the and simplicity of the of the fun that comes from it. 
So I mean, but Picasso said it, it's it's the job of the artist and and the poet and the creator to hold a mirror up to the world hmm. to show them what they're doing. I mean, I have written poems about the situations that are going on on the planet and and yeah. things like that, but. I really feel like we need to reset sort of world boundaries in a different way. I mean, it sounds kind of strange, but somebody was asking, actually somebody that I met in Singapore at, at the Golden Door, Yo-Yo, um, she asked me to do a podcast and she was just asking me candidly, if you had to give a solution for the world, what solution would you give? Mm. Well, my solution would be, Let's get only pregnant women together in councils to make decisions about bombing, okay? From henceforth, let's have this as an absolute rule in the world. Sure, we will use whatever bombs, but let pregnant women who are carrying life in their tummies get together and say, yes, obliterate the children of that, that area, okay? I mean, come on, it's 2024, and we're supposed to be the most advanced species on the planet. Why are we not asking our mothers? Why are we not asking the people that bring forth life? We've got all religions, especially the three big ones. It's always God. I mean, and you know, okay, he's not supposed to have a gender, but you know, he does have a gender. Hmm. When all of life comes from women, even in this day and age, which man has given birth? There's a funny film about Arnold Schwarzenegger trying to do it, but even, that that was not, even he couldn't do it. Even the Terminator couldn't do it. <laughs> so what chance has any other guy got? And yet we do it routinely. I mean, some 16-year-olds do it accidentally after a good night out. I mean, come on. <laughs> we, have to, we have to really see where the, the weight of the world needs to lie because the planet is our mother. Mm. Great right? Everything grows on the planet. We grew on her too. And it's all wonderful to have all this strength and be the apex predators and run the planet. But we need to think about the other people. And I, I use that word advisedly because all animals are people. All living beings are people. Mm. They have rights too. Absolutely. That's always been our goal here with this with this podcast is to just try to get everyone in the world to think about it a little bit different, how we are all together. We're all in this big yeah. spaceship Earth together. Yeah, and this we, is we why should... even with the fly, I made friends and we, we did journey yeah. together and we got off together, you know. Um, exactly. You have to just change your way of thinking a little mm -hmm. bit about the way we are with with not just each other, but all other beings. Because otherwise, all this responsibility, it's just, you know, it's like giving a 15-year-old billions to spend. Mm. They're going to do something reckless. Right. Yeah, I, I, do, power, I do especially like the sort of uh, point about decision-making, because it sort of reminded me a bit how, like, in various places in the world, when, for example, the female reproductive rights are being decided like legally, it's always like a panel of 40 old celibate guys, yes. like sort yes. of least qualified people to, to yes. weigh in. Yes. I mean, guys to all, all, I mean, everything to do with the body is, is controlled by men. You know, censorship is done by men. I lived in Dubai for 10 years where censorship was so rife that once time out, it was Valentine's Day, had a picture of a Cupid, you know, Cupid, little cherub. But they'd made, they did blanked his dick out. They'd made little shorts. Somebody sat there with a marker on all the timeouts in Dubai and made little shorts on the Cupid. And I was just thinking, this draws more attention to it. And also... <laughs> it's like Sasha Baron Cohen joke. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Worse than a Sarah Basha, American Cohen. Because at least those ones are funny. <laughs> yeah, this was... So, yeah, it's really... Um... And even Sasha Baron Cohen shows us how alienated we are. You know, in Japan, they had ice cream made from human breast milk. And people really liked it and were enjoying it. 
until they were told it's human breast milk. And mm. then they were like, oh, we don't want it. But I ask people, because I'm a vegan, but I ask people to stop and think, we are drinking the milk of another species. First of all, milk is a baby food. Okay, that's why most people become lactose intolerant. And two, a cow has four stomachs. A calf is born at 200 pounds, and in two years, the calf weighs 2,000, because milk is a really fattening food. And yet, we guzzle it like there's no tomorrow, and without respecting the beings that give us that milk. How many people stop to think, Thank you for that. Because, you know, I breastfed my sons. It hurts. Your tits feel like shit. <laughs> These cows are kept pregnant their entire lives so that we can keep on milking them. A lot of them get mastesis and other problems. But we never think about these things. And when milk goes off, we just casually throw it away. Do you know how much energy and effort it takes to make milk? That's why women lose weight if they breastfeed. That's designed by nature. If you keep off the formula and you breastfeed your kid, the kid will drink all your weight away. Mm. Yeah. These things are not put out there. These things are not made part of normal life. Yeah. Yeah, we we lose sight of a lot of the a lot of the basics like that, don't we? We really yeah. need to get back to nature, back to understanding the the balance of life and and respecting the harmony of, of, of all the connections. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. This is, this is some interesting stuff. I'm trying to figure out where we can go with this and uh, what are the fun directions we can take. So this definitely fits squarely in the finding your purpose um, part of our pillar, in our pillars of Protopia. Um, and it, each one of us kind of has to have a little bit of poet inside of ourselves to kind of ask the questions like you're asking, Esme, as far as, how do we connect? How do we find a way to reach out to our neighbors, to reach out to our enemies and find the middle ground, find the common ground that can unite us and that can bring us back to a spot where we don't have to bomb each other? Like you said, if the pregnant women were making the decisions, I, I can't see hardly any of them ever deciding to bomb anyone. No. You know, war would be basically over if the pregnant women just controlled it. Exactly. The countries in the world, there would be no yeah, war, they, probably. They should, they should be highly, just basic rules like that. Sure, have whatever leaders you want. But before such big decisions are made, let's ask the people that are sort of, you know, connected in that, in that position. We yeah. need to, that, that's the bit we need to readjust. It can't just, I mean, they're very, very sweet and, and I'm sure very earnest, but we can't just have white guys making old white guys making the decision for everything on the planet. Like Absolutely. you were saying, even like you were saying, Martin, even about women's body rights, what we can and cannot do with our bodies. We can't have white guys deciding it because they've never been women with problems. I mean, first of all, they should all try getting periods just mm. for six months, then make the decision, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Walk the walk before you talk the talk although i'm pretty sure that those same people are also extremely against any transgender experimentation that would be required absolutely to yes. acquire, even if we had the technology uh but i would say yeah. uh, that uh you know just absolutely seriously because uh, my background is political science so it's just actually very interesting questions and i always like uh particularly about poets uh, or in poetry that like it's very good at identifying the nonsense so that people can laugh at it. Uh, so like it's in how you say the thing because I you know I can say it sort of very boringly uh, analytically that like it's about expertise and actually being a stakeholder. You know, there's a lot of decisions being made by people who aren't actually invested in the outcomes because whatever they're deciding isn't affecting yeah. them directly. So sort of the boring way to say it is like yeah, we need more. Even like in, in business, there's this like new movement of like it's from shareholder value to stakeholder value that like the people who are affected actually being involved in making the decisions. But, you know, it's always better if like uh, if a poet says it, <laughs> it's just like uh, it's a, what if like, you know, it was pregnant women exclusively who are making decisions about bombings. Like if you say it like this, like that's making it a lot more effective and uh, much quicker to be able to make that point. So I, I really like yeah. this, this, this value or function of poetry that I think is often lost because poetry today sadly is like a bit of a lost art in in my experience 
Yeah. At the very at the very least, pregnant women should get two votes for everything, right? Because they're, they're carrying two people. Because they're, they're carrying two people. That's right. That's, exactly. That's, 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 but, but let's not make, give people that idea because then they'll charge them double for every airplane seat. You know the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's Fair, definitely it's a balance. There. But uh, no, it's a lot of fun. It's uh, trying to figure out how we can get more representation and get get everyone in the world to just think a little more about each other when we make these decisions. Yeah. And think a little bit less about our own tribe and think more about the global the global, global tribe. Yeah. I mean I remember when our children had International Day at school, because you know schools have international days. And um I um I remember I went dressed in, in a kimono and I had a Japanese friend do everything up properly. And my husband, who's English, went dressed in a dish dash with the full gufra and everything. When we got to the school, they were all like, you were supposed to dress in the clothes of your own country. And we were like, <laughs> but it's all our own country. We're one born, right? I mean, so long as you're not wearing it disrespectfully, it doesn't really matter. We're all one world. But then yeah. you have leaders like Donald Trump wanting to put up, put up a wall or people, you know, I mean, we are, we are just so focused on Things like even during the submersible, at the same time as the whole world was going on about five in that boat and two of those were very dear to me, um, there was another boat. There was a Greek boat tragedy as well, wasn't there? There was a 500, counted 500 dead there. They, that's I, one of my points was about that. They are also mothers and sisters and brothers and father, you know, yeah. they have also lost it, but the world doesn't mourn that. That was a bit of a, a bitter poem. It was like, is death weighed by the size of your wallet? You know, well, how, much, how much do we mourn you? Well, if I, yeah, if I, if I may just interject here, because also I studied journalism at school and they actually teach you at journalism schools, the equation for that. There is like a very cynical sort of equation that it's a combination of several factors, like a, uh, how many of those were your people? So it's like uh, your people are yeah. more interesting in news than like more yeah. higher numbers. So there's like a, an equation between like how much more not your people yeah. it would have to be for that yeah. to be equally to interesting as much. news. Yeah. And that's just yeah. felt a crazy to me always, but it's sort of That's crazy because works. everyone is our people, right? Everyone. It's like these these divisions, I just don't understand them because we are the species that control the planet. We've got all this amazing technology. I mean, you know, someone was interviewing me the other day um, on the on the on the anniversary of the, of the Titan for an article in the newspaper. They were they did a zoop, they did Google Meet just like this. They were like, "Isn't technology amazing?" I was like, "Yeah, technology is amazing, but not amazing enough for me to go back one year and bring those two back." You know, I mean, there are limits, but. On the other hand, technology is amazing, but have we kept up ethically with where technology has got? I mean, technology is so super fly now, but what about our ethics? Hmm. And I would be interested to find out what if, not that it's going to happen, and I hope we pre prevent it from happening, but what if we got the technological nows to be able to, for example, I'm having a disagreement with my neighbor, I press a button and something horrible happens to them. You know, what, what, where would we go with that? Yeah. Well, that's that's kind of where you get into the, the flaming wars, right? Like it, people will leave reviews uh, for a business. They, they, something happens and they didn't like that person for whatever reason, and they leave a, a scathing review on, yeah. on Google or, or wherever. And that can actually affect their business. They can go to business with one or two bad reviews in some cases, yeah. especially if it goes viral. Yeah. Um, so what if they could nuke them? Yeah. 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 Okay. Like it, it's just, it's the next step of that. Like, what if you had the an AI? Yeah. You have an AI that can constantly write thousands of reviews, bad yeah. reviews about uh, that person or, or yeah. whatever, they're the business and completely shut them down or, or start rumors so they lose their job or lose their family or convince their wife that they're cheating on them or whatever it might be. Yeah. There's, there's, there's any number of ways we can mess with each other. Yes. Uh, with all absolutely. this technological power. You're right. And, and, not, not to mention deep fakes. You can make a video yeah. of them committing a crime or try to frame them for a murder exactly. or something. Yes. Um, yeah. and, and it's all becoming 
layers upon layers upon layers at the same time that we are losing so many children to just behind their screens. Yeah. I mean, they have active social lives, but you know, a lot of togetherness in community is about hands-on. Everything, right. we are biosocial beings and have been from the start of time. So we need the, you know, it's what we missed in COVID times, the, the person-to-person connection, the 3D connection. So many of our children, and in fact, there's a, I think in, in Japan it's called uh, Hikibori, there's a whole rash of young men that just disappear into the rooms and just never come out for anything. And this is, again, a loss that's happening alongside the loss of everything is online now. You check in online. You have a complaint, handle it online. You, you know, th- there is no human connection or yeah no like things the the technology clearly is supposed to be like enabling like us talking to people from yeah. other part of the world it's not really that like you were supposed to be using it 100 percent of the time for a person next in the next room over yeah, uh, yeah. The, it, it's critical that we we keep the face-to-face connections as well and, and when you're online even like this we're still face-to-face we can still yeah. connect with each other yeah um but it's even more important too to connect with people in person, out in nature, to, to go travel, to, to whether it's camping or or, or swimming or in just enjoying the, everything the world has to offer in a you know a fun, friendly, safe way, I guess you could say. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's 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 really hard, and I'm, I myself, I have six children. Uh, the oldest is 21 now, and you know I worry. I, you don't you know you don't look old enough to have children, let alone <laughs> six. <laughs> my youngest is seven. Actually, my youngest right now and my wife they are in Japan um, as we speak. They, they just flew there yesterday. My wife is Japanese. Completely <laughs> bowled me over. First six children, then the youngest is seven, then yeah. they're in Japan. Wow, that's three three things to bowl Lots me of- over. Lots of fun connections anyway. So they, I've been getting constant pictures from them in, in the airports and all the fun things. It, it's her, it's my seven-year-old's first time in Japan to visit her And grandpa. where are they? Are they in Tokyo? Uh, they're going uh, Osaka right now, and then they're going down to Ishigaki near oh, Okinawa, okay. which coincidentally is very close to Taiwan. So they're very worried yeah. about a war right now. And there's been a lot of military buildup in the area. Um, and people in Ishigaki, it's a small little island about 100 miles away from Taiwan. Um, and they're very, very worried right now that there'll be some kind of Chinese incursion at some point in the next couple of years, um, or really at any point, and, and that they could uh, conquer that island or, or bomb that island because they have Japanese uh, presence yes. there. They have military presence there um, that are set up to try to dissuade them. So it's this whole kind of uh, mutually assured destruction yeah. kind of mad strategy that the more money we put into bombs and and missiles the less likely they'll start this war yeah but you know it'd be nice if that worked i I hope it works but it's kind of a a little bit of a scary call your bluff kind of thing and then we all die um so anyway my wife my wife's very concerned her parents live there they're right there and she's worried that you know if um she something might happen and she might never see them again or she may not be able to get over there again so it's it's very that must and be terrible. I'm so sorry. That must be really. So it's uh, yeah, it's kind of ah. it's kind of happening everywhere at this point. I'm um, from the it Czech is, Republic yeah. personally, and uh, Czech Republic is just you know uh, like yeah. there's just one country between Czech Republic and Ukraine. Yeah, it's Slovakia. Yeah. So we all feel it, and that's that's the, the reason I bring it up is that we're we're all connected to these things that happen in the world. These nasty wars and rumors of wars and and uh, future wars, whatever it might be, and we don't need it anymore. We, we've got the technology to feed everybody. We've got the technology to entertain everybody more than they could ever, more than they could ever want, more yes. than kings and emperors yes. of a hundred years ago. We've got yes. more we've than got everything. And, and we just, we just don't, you know, there's all this, is there life in space? Is there life in space? You know, I just keep thinking, but there's all of life right here. Yeah. You know, I mean, why, why, why are we destroying? Because of course, when war happens, it's not just, Human beings that suffer, animals suffer, the ground suffers, trees suffer. I mean, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, nothing grows there still. Yeah, you know, and Chernobyl. It is, it, yeah, yeah it, yeah, it is exactly. We just, it's just 
I don't know. It's, it's just, it just leaves me speechless. No, it's, I hear uh, you. And, and it's important to it's important to remember these things. It's important not to forget. It's important to teach our children about World War II and about all the, all of these things because it's it's so far away now that a lot of the younger people they're not connected to it. They don't study it as much as as our generation did. And they're starting to lose sight of of the lessons we learned, and that's why these wars are kind of start, starting to happen again. I think is we've we've forgotten the horror. Uh, to it, some extent, and it's just, we need uh, to remember. There's no reason for this. It's reminded me of like sort of my sort of favorite uh, uh, tragic joke, uh, which is just like, yeah, sure, there's life on Earth, but it's still an open question if it's intelligent. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, we 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 try. We get we got to keep pushing forward anyway, and keep uh, keep the hope alive. But well, at the same what time, part of the seven pillars and going forward and these connections is about because, yeah. you know. We may or may not succeed, but we're going to die trying. Yes, it's utopia or oblivion, or protopia is our new word. Yeah, utopia absolutely. or oblivion is, is our path forward. And we, we've got to make every day one step towards a better protopia. And it's progressing towards a better world each and every day. Exactly. And if we can kind of keep that as our hope and just keep meeting new people. Like just today, being able to meet with you, Asme, is, is giving me kind of more inspiration and hope to to, to get along and do more and, and keep on meeting new people and keep on pushing myself and my children and everyone connected to me in some small way to respect the world and respect all the blessings that we have from nature. Well, it's a mutually inspirational thing. I mean, seeing both of you and, and you know, seeing your link now th through the golden door and all of this, you know, the, the, the circle widens. Yeah. And, you know, our planet is a ball, so a circle is a perfect shape you know if you can just widen it out <laughs> in every dim dimension you know we're going to get there I think. absolutely so i was just curious too asme so you uh, are you connected with the um what was it the uh, truth uh the uh the golden door truth uh, creators yeah. workshop or yeah. truth creators yes. program yeah yeah um so that's something i think you all got a few free uh free months with with your award ceremony right so yes. something we've been kind of advertising a little bit for them uh, anybody who's interested in the Truth Creators program, check the link on on the um, on the blog. There, it'll be posted. Um, are you enjoying it so far? How have you been? Have you have you done much of it yet? I have been doing bits of it. I've not. I've been quite busy because I've been getting my book published, and then there, there have been a few. I I actually have. I bought a house that's going to be 100 years old in three years time um, because when I moved to Amsterdam I wanted the rest of my family to visit so the house is far too big and far too old and um, an old house like an old woman needs a lot of care so the amount of issues that have come up with that and along with my publishing I've had to do the truth, truth creators a little bit on the sidelines so I've not been as fully involved with that as I would like but I certainly get all the updates and I'm a part of it and, and, and I'm looking forward to the programs they're putting together for children and for, you know. Excellent yeah no, I've, I've been kind of enjoying it myself just uh, learning and we're Martin and I are working on our, our own book right now with the Pillars of Protopia bringing it all together and we're using a lot of those techniques to kind of build a hopefully build a book that will save the world in some small way one one step at a time and we'd love to Kind of keep connecting people with you and your work. So your book will be called "In the Wake of the Titan." Is that that's, that's right? right? Yeah. In the Wake of the Titan. So definitely uh, check that out. Any anybody who's interested, and we'll, we'd love to kind of connect with you again. Asma, if there's any ever anything you'd like to work on with us, we're, we're we'd love to have your input. We'd love to have your feedback on any of the pillars that we're working on, or any of the stuff on our website, SavingTheWorldTogether.org. Thank you. Thank um, you. And Martin, I'd love to see some of your Czech poetry. I've got a very close friend who's who's actually he's he's British, but he's fluent in Czech so oh. much so that when my husband went to visit him in Czechoslovakia and he started speaking Czech, he was started speaking in English. They were like, "But aren't you Czech?" And he was like, "No, no, I, I." So I'd love to share some of your poems with him because I shared a not so good poem with you, but I'd like to hear some of yours. Okay, uh, I actually have even some in English, some some newer ones, so I can, I guess, share share what I have with you. Yeah, Why please, not? I would very much like that. I'll send you his email. You guys can connect directly, and then we'll, we'll put you on our mailing list, Adme, and we'll let you know any of the updates as far as the work we're doing with Saving the World Together. We'd love to connect with you again sometime soon in the future. Absolutely, and, uh, and anything I can do at any time to help in any way, I'm here for it. 
Thanks thank you so much. Great. Cool. Thanks so much for joining us today. It was so great thank to you. hear your story. It's so inspiring. Um, and I challenge everybody to kind of find the poem, poem, find the poem within yourself to make the world a little bit better and share it with other people because it's uh, it's the light that we can shine to others that really help us save the world together. So let's work for our own protopia and keep on pushing forward, everybody. Thanks for joining us so much. Take uh, we'll, it. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Let's save the world, let's Bye -bye. Save the world together, everybody. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>